Gentlemen, welcome to the show today. My guests are Chris Smith, at t Vice President Shared Services and CTO Public Sector. Chris, welcome to the program. Great to see you, Jason. And Mike Leff, Vice President of at t Public Sector Defense. Mike, welcome to the show. Jason, thanks for having us. Good to see you. The, the bill for us by decision, I think, is, is most interesting when you look at the DOD side of it. For years, you had something like Mill Cloud One, which was on-premise at D DISA, and then all of a sudden they said, well, Mill Cloud Two, we're gonna go in a different direction. And then you have this cloud steering working group. Again, <clears throat> for years, DOD was, well, let's keep it in-house, let's let's use DISA Dex, or let's, let's make it a private cloud. And now they're saying, hey, how can we do commercial cloud? So are you seeing that, that build versus buy decision, that, that move to as a service in DOD, that much more readily acceptable? I think, yes, we're seeing a, a shift in both mindset and, and culture, right? It's interesting, when you look historically at how the military has uh, developed and deployed all of their assets, many of the platforms and weapon systems, right, uh, and, 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 and a lot of their communication system, tactical communication systems, they go directly to the private sector to design, build, and deploy, help them deploy. One of the things that the, uh, the military has continued to hold on to historically has been information technology and the underlying infrastructure. And I think what they're seeing is that they can't move at the speed and the scale that a commercial provider like AT&T can move at. Uh, they don't have the funds, they, they're not able to make those massive investments, and quite frankly, that's not the core uh, of their mission. So AT&T, you can imagine, has one of the largest uh, networks on the planet, right? We're a global network provider. Um, we've got a presence across the globe, and we make massive investments. Uh, Chris, I think it's probably about $140 billion uh, that we've invested. And, th and that's in infrastructure, right, fiber, spectrum. When you look at the kind of investment we make, right, that's exactly what positions us to be able to provide network as a service. In fact, the technology has evolved over the years. Clearly, we're able to com uh, provide compute as a service, right? That's been happening for the last 10 years, storage as a service. Um, but what you're now starting to see is the third leg of the stool, which is de de delivering network as a service, being able to provide bandwidth and network on demand. So you have a, you have a capability that allows uh, our customers, particularly within DOD, to consume the network as a service, dramatically changes the entire capital expenditure investments they need, uh, significantly re not only reduces CapEx, but reduces OpEx as well. So huge cost savings, greater capability, and in delivering the network as a service, they are getting the latest, greatest capability from a company like AT&T without having to invest significant amounts of money in their infrastructure.